And welcome to Gold Chat Live. I'm so excited about my show today. I know I say that every week, but every week I have awesome guests and today is no exception. And for those of you who don't know me, I'm Deborah Eckerling. I'm author of the award-winning Your Goal Guide, a roadmap for setting, planning, and achieving your goals, and founder of The Deb Method, which is my system for goal setting simplified. And every Sunday night, I lead the Goal Chat Twitter chat and then on Mondays, I bring in awesome people to dive deeper into the conversation. And Thursdays, you can watch for new episodes of the Dev Show podcast, which honestly, it's my goal chat live in podcast formats because why not? We're all about getting content out there to everybody to help more people. And video is one of the best ways to connect with your audience. So my topic this month, or my theme rather this month is visibility and we can't talk about visibility without talking about video now can we mm -mm. Yeah. of course not and i have wonderful guests today so i have dave belsuto from iographer great to see you and we we became friends because we were on vivica von rosen's live together mm -hmm. and we're like okay we get to be friends mm -hmm. and <laughs> cf jackson i met just a couple months ago at a different networking meetup and i love bringing new friends into the mix because isn't that why we connect with people and then my dear friend julie riley who i have not seen in real life for i think we decided it was three years three I think yeah three and a half kind of ridiculous but thrilled to reconnect several times now through the magic of video so julie great to see you the three people we have here today are all video experts in their own right and because all I said is they're awesome and they're here, I'm going to let them introduce themselves. I would say better, but actually. So Dave, please um, share who you are and why you love video and maybe a little of your backstory. I love video because I grew up watching movies with my dad, old movies, you know, going with him to see all the old black and whites. Um, and I just fell in love with video over the, or with, with movies and storytelling over the years. And then eventually I went to work in Hollywood. I was an actor and did lots of movies and feature films and television, and then became a producer and worked for Mel Gibson's company and Lifetime Television. I was an exec producer there. And my wife and I, who was in the industry too, she's an award-winning production designer for Dexter and some other shows. Uh, we both decided to get out of the business because it was gonna kill us eventually. Uh, just so many hours, 16 hour days and stuff. And so um, she went uh, to do some other things and I was just kind of laying on the couch playing uh, video games and she didn't like that. So I became a high school media teacher as my second life and fell in love with teaching kids and it was the greatest job I ever had. While I was there, um, we were limited to, uh, we had about 130 students a day. I was limited to five cameras, I had three, Kind of dslr type cameras and i had two sony broadcast cameras and uh, i was not getting enough work done uh, as a per student basis type thing there'd be like multiple people to one group to make some kind of a uh, any kind of video or a project and it was just not getting enough work done so the lovely people at apple at the time made this thing called the ipad and i was very intrigued by it because i'm an apple fanatic and um, apple uh the uh, right after that was the iPad mini and right there that was it it sold me because it was this little thing I'm, I'm six foot three and and 280 pounds I could put an iPad mini in my pants pocket so I was pretty impressed that I could put this thing in my pocket that I had this great camera that shot high definition video uh, it also had uh, the ability to edit on there through various apps uh, and and just turn this into a content tool to allow these kids to go out there and start creating stories. And the beauty of it was that uh, it was very, um, they, they, they knew how to operate this. It wasn't like teaching them how to use a red camera or a DSLR. It was an extension of their phones that they were using because everything was app based. And so it, we spent less time doing that, uh, teaching you know the specifics and letting them go out there and learn storytelling and to create. While this all was happening, I was still very happy about it. I thought there had to be a way to put these things on a tripod because we were putting them on pillows and against books and things like that. 
And so I uh, started tinkering in the classroom. I knew how to use 3D software. I created this case system uh, that I, you just pop in your, your uh, iPad and it had the ability to have handles on both sides so that you could have stable shots so that you can put it on a tripod and you could add lenses to it. And so this, and I put this into our 3D printer uh, we had, and I had this working prototype and I was done, that was enough. And, but the kid said, no, why don't you go and uh, do an, in, uh, a Kickstarter? I had no idea what that was. Did the Kickstarter and next thing I know is I got Forbes uh, <laughs> doing an article on me, the New York Times, a teacher trying to revolutionize video. And uh, to top it all off, I had um, one of the parents uh, who, I worked in a very affluent school district and one of the parents who I became very good friends with uh, prior to all of this, uh, I picked the right parent to be friends with, uh, decided to write me a $500,000 check to start this company. And here we are nine years later. Uh, it was just used on the latest James Bond. Uh, Ariana Grande uses it. Uh, I'm proud to say that it's, it's schools and, and uh, universities all over the world. And uh, I'm just thrilled to be able to create video. I'll show you a really little quickie overhead shot. This is our new one that's coming out. This is called the Iographer Pro because people want to use the iPad Pro. So you can, it expands in here and you put your iPad in there, uh, the 12 inch one, which is a monster, it's amazing. And now you can go out there and film and put it on a tripod and add other accessories on the top or the side and turn it into like a filmmaking tool. And that's what people are doing now. Um, it's There's great apps that take your uh, video ability and these mobile devices up 10 notches. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, it, it just uh, lowers the bar of entry for people. Although the iPad Pro is like a $2,000 thing now. Um, <laughs> it's like rivals and I'm a MacBook Pro, but uh, it's a monster. And, and it's just amazing that people are doing it. But uh, Boston Celtics are using it to, um, to, to do coaching stuff, but also for fan interaction because it's less uh of a pain of of than having a big e and g kind of camera on your face now it's just like a big ipad who cares it's an ipad you don't get nervous people are like and the quality of the video is good enough to throw up on the jumbotron and stuff like that so anyway well, it's just been exciting well i love your story for a lot of reasons but the the part that really got me is in my old office before i moved every time i had to go on camera it was seven books and i took a picture of the seven books that i needed to raise my cam my computer mm -hmm. so it would be the same seven books so fortunately i moved before the pandemic so i have a little office space and didn't if i had to do that setup every single day i oh, probably go a little bit more nuts mm -hmm. but one of the wonderful things about your story is in going back to the whole visibility conversation is <laughs> you didn't really try which is great. I mean, can we bottle that? Um, I'm going to flip it over to CF Jackson. And uh, like I said, we met at one of the mixers for, it was the JV mixer for people who are uh, basically trying to make the world a better place and connect with each other. And we just like automatically said, we need to be friends. So here we are. Uh, would you explain uh, who you are, what you do and why you are here? Thank you for having me. Pretty much what I do, um, I am with, I do streaming. So I am with iDefine TV and what we do, we have entrepreneurs go from YouTube to TV, easily utilizing the new streaming platforms. That we mostly all are using some form of what fashion, maybe a Roku, Apple TV, or Amazon Fire Stick. And I really got into this entrepreneurial world back in 2003 when I wrote a novel. Um, like you said, I'm a I grew up as an only child. I love film. I love movies. And that was my way of getting away as a kid, learning how to just get engulfed in something. So that was my getaway as a child. But to really fast forward into the world of writing a book, I woke up one Saturday and there was a synopsis, a story. And I said to myself, this would be a great film. And I was telling a friend about it. She's like, oh, write a book, write a novel. I said, I don't have time to write a book or a novel about it. So then at that time, I was really, really was passionate about what is my purpose. So I decided to go ahead and what is it? What would it hurt to write it? So I got up, left my um, my my sofa, and went to the computer and started writing the book. 
And I wrote it like a movie, so I didn't know how to write a book, but I love film. So I cast all my actors and I knew who I wanted to be. I mean, I choose Queen Latifah for the main person. I choose um, Regina King. I wanted Joaquin Phoenix in it. So I had all my favorite. I just knew everybody I had their character written out and had their clothing. I mean, I did all this. It was fun to write it in terms of writing a novel in terms of film. I even scouted out places in Atlanta that where the whole scene was acting. It was all of this and I finished it within four to five months. And it was a pleasure writing it and this when it got to the point of actually getting it out to the world, that's when things changed. And back in 2004, it was not favorable of having it on print of the man. You were frowned upon, so I created my, created my own publishing company. And when I learned to how to market and promote online, I taught other authors and other small business owners how to utilize online platforms. But the media side of things always had been there. And then I was able to learn in 2013, somebody reached out to me and said, um, mentioned Roku. And I never heard of Roku, I'm like what's Roku? But I thought the platform of being a streaming piece of gadget to put on my television was cool. So I came home and I Googled it. And like many of you probably heard of Sony. Sony is a household name. So I bought the Sony and said, I know it's Sony, but I don't know what Roku. So I got the Sony and I got it in the house. I'm like, oh my gosh, I got cable and this cool little device. What is this thing? And I was really complacent. Six months later, a friend of mine mentioned a thing to me again. Like, what is this thing? I can get on it. I can get on TV. So I fast forward and say, well, how can I get on the Sony? You know, it's like, again, it's like sketches. When sketches first came out, nobody really wanted sketches. But now sketches is a household name, you know? So I was trying to figure out how to utilize it. And then I figure out, like, let me get this Roku and it blew my mind. Because here in Atlanta, you can, it can cost you anywhere like $500 for a 30-minute segment on a Tuesday that's a broadcast. And so how many other small business owners and entrepreneurs have $500 every single time to get mm -hmm. on a 30-minute segment? And so mm -hmm. I said, well, I Define TV is about really helping people and entrepreneurs define TV, and we no longer have to have a massive budget. And mm -hmm. like you were saying, that you don't need a massive team or massive production production studio we have all this technology in the palm of our hands. We have our mm -hmm. webcams and all these great things to really do it. So that has been my mission to really help entrepreneurs recognizing that with streaming platforms like Roku, which is now the number one platform in terms of streaming in the country, they have a reach across the United States, Canada, UK, and Brazil. And they're now reaching to be in Germany now. I think they're now in Germany. So it's like, how can you leverage this? And that's been my, my, my goal is showing people that now we have people from independent filmmakers, independent music artists. We have those who are book publishers who are now interviewing um, coaches. So people oftentimes wonder how they, can, how they utilize it. But the thing is, you gotta think differently, like like small kid. We, I know for myself as a kid, there was never a boundary when we were kids. We, we played and we tried to make it figure out. We had a quarter, that quarter went beyond we could even imagine. And so that same creativity, sometimes trying to figure out, well, how does it work? If you don't even know how to work, you just go out, you go to Burger King or anywhere you want to eat, you eat. You don't ask how they fix it. You just want the end result. So mm -hmm. if you get caught in the crawl of how it works, you're never going to get there. But now we with television, does it matter? When I saw it, I could care less how it works. I just want to get on the thing and how can I get to it? And I found somebody to help me get to it, we partner, and that was it. And so that's mm -hmm. my mission to help others do the same thing is recognizing that it doesn't have to be massive or have to be a struggle. You just got to do it. And just find your message and get it out there. I, I love it. It's it's so important now in a lot of, <clears throat> when I talk about my book, I talk about how it came out in January, 2020. And the whole purpose is to help people embrace change when you have a plan. It's basically the guidebook to figuring out your plan. And even more so in the last year and a half, We've had to be creative and find solutions and get ourselves out there in exciting ways. And I love how pioneer you were about this. So I loved your story. Thank you so much for being here. Julie Riley. Hello, how are you? Good. Uh, so I am Julie Riley and I am the social media manager for StreamYard. And StreamYard is what we are using to talk to all of you right now. Um, so we are the easiest way to create professional looking streams. And what I love is that we really hold to three pillars, and that's ease of use, reliability, and professional looking streams, which I loved because that matched up so perfectly with your product, Dave, that it was. It was that ease of use. You had a um, problem and you just needed a simple solution mm -hmm. and created that. And it's 
it's not complicated and it's not difficult to use. And so that's really what we do at StreamYard. But I got started into marketing and into live streaming um, at the very early days of social media and the digital marketing side of things, starting working for a Harley Davidson dealer uh, wow. with their e-commerce systems and getting them set up and all of that and fell in love with the digital aspect of where this could go. And so that was kind of the wild, wild west where it was getting started. After I left that dealership, I started my own business and had my own business and grew it solely on social media, discovered video in 2015 at the early days of Periscope and Meerkat and Blab and you know all of those pieces that were just so crucial to the changing of video on the go. Mm-hmm. And that was really the turning point for me was when I could take this piece of you know, equipment and go do video anywhere mm-hmm. and talk to anybody. Um, you know, and, and that was that connection. And what I loved about it was that it's the true authentic you. You you can't get on the camera and not be you. I mean, you can really try, but it is not easy and people are gonna see right through that. And so you're so much more authentic and relatable on video. And that's what I love about live too, is live is you're going to have the spot where you go, oh shoot, I forgot what I was going to say. Hold on. Or you stumble over the word and it's okay because it makes you human and genuine. I love that you talked about raw um, because people love that. They, yeah. they just, That's a real person. I understand that rawness and that's the biggest thing that we connect with our customers with. Yep. It's the conversations and it's being able to create those pieces and this back and forth Mm -hmm. that um, you're not going to get when it's not video. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, you can sit there and send emails back and forth all day long or try to type to people, um, you know, and and we've proven that people want to feel that emotion. They want to know, like, and trust you. I mean, it is like the marketing 101 adage that, you know, Mm -hmm. you've got to get them there and they can only get to know, like, and trust you so much much through a website or Mm -hmm. through an email or through a social post if they're not getting to feel who you really are well i love well i knew this was going to be a great conversation and i love it when i'm right but (laughs) but here what we have is is the tools to film and yes i'm using my iographer ring light thank you and using Streamyard. And then after the StreamYard, what do you do with it to to um, syndicate it? Mm-hmm. And um, it's it's like the three phases. And Julie jumped into this a little bit, but I would love to to go a little bit more detailed into it. Which is what is the value of video? I mean, you just basically said it, Julie. Is you get to like hang out with people in real life and where would we have been the last year? Oh my gosh! Um, without it. And for me, it's a lot of it has been reconnecting because I have the show and I get to invite my friends to come hang out with me. <laughs> um, so what do you think, Dave, beyond the obvious, you know, like trust thing? Uh, I'll tell you one thing that uh, when COVID started and we were all trapped and, uh, you know, all of a sudden my business took a huge drop because schools were not going back to school. And one of the big things that uh, one of our bread and butter is is people filming stuff for coaching or recruiting videos. So all the sports were dried up and the POs stopped coming. And there was about a month where we were like, oh, my God, are we going to get through this uh, without burning through every penny we have? (laughs) And um, I just sat one day and I was like, you know what? Everyone is going to have to keep communicating and they're going to have to embrace live streaming. I did a little course in it, um, just talking about the tools needed, yeah. uh, whether you're using a PC or, or an, a Mac and whether you're using an Android or an mm-hmm. iPhone. And these are the tools that you need to get better lighting, better audio, better uh, video quality. These are the apps I recommended. And then we put together these little simple kits with a little tiny flexible tripod, a little light, uh, like a miniature little ring light um, and a lavalier microphone. <laughs> And we had a great year. Yeah, there you go. And we had a great year um, after that. It just everything picked up and then just led into the survival of Biographer. And uh, it was a whole new, and now we have this whole work from home um, area on the website and it's not going anywhere. 
for a long time. If, if, yeah. if it ever goes anywhere, <laughs> you know, um, well, I think companies are starting to realize, hey, instead of paying for that giant building, uh, you know, let's have people work at home and use these mm-hmm. kind of tools to, uh, to work together and keep in contact with each other. I, I completely agree. And it's especially for me. Mm-hmm. And I've said this before, I'll say it again. I've met more people over the last year and a half than I ever could have hoped to have met in a lifetime in LA. So you do have that extra added benefit mm. and absolutely agree. Mm. It's not going away. It just how hybrid businesses will be in the future. Mm. It remains to be seen, but I think the smart ones will mm. keep embracing and utilizing these tools and keep creating. Um, so Steve, yeah. do you have two cents or a nickel on the value of video? <laughs> Almost definitely, as you stated, it's it's not going anywhere and it's only getting, a friend of mine was talking so funny, we were talking the other day about what happened to, not to throw it under the bus, what happened to um, Skype. And I said, Skype hasn't really gone anywhere, it's that the, I know for myself, when I logged into it, it was just more so of a distraction when friends saw you on Skype. But it was more of these new technologies like the Zoom, like the WebEx or whatever you use in Facebook and all the other platforms, they're immediate. They're instantaneous, and no matter what, people want to see videos, and everybody's entertaining one another now. We became we becoming each other's entertainment, utilizing these platforms, and you don't have to wait to go on these other platforms. But videos, where we can communicate, we can we can share who we are, communicate who we are, how we are, um, is a way of just being. It transcends across no matter what the actual mode is in terms of that um, language, because now you have the actual, you know. You can have the subtitles at the bottom of it now. So it's so intuitive what we are and how we can share and we can do it in so many different ways. So mm-hmm. I definitely agree. And then I say too, is you can stream it and utilize it and stream more online and all the different components you can use with the ad show. I was telling somebody the other day about, you may want to use StreamYard other than the other one because you have so many different bells and whistles that it gives you compared to the other. That means so many people are used to it, but they're not open themselves to what other vehicles and other sources that gives them a little bit more mm-hmm. and oftentimes i think people get caught in that circle of how to do the video but open yourself to other venues and other sources that gives you that added push and i do i say you use your stream market because you have so much more you can do than the other honestly yes, well <laughs> and clearly i am a Streamyard fan and i will admit that i think i tested another platform like twice and then I just jumped over to StreamYard and have been loyal. Should I have admitted that? Do you like knowing <laughs> I, I love that? that you're here? Yes. <laughs> but, but it was because uh, another author, I believe, was using it for certain. I I honestly don't remember why I didn't start with you all. But don't you love that I jump ship mm-hmm. like quickly because StreamYard really is the easiest in terms of live streaming. Very very user friendly. Um, so, and Julie, uh, how many live shows do you do? Um, right now, there are actually, uh, I only have one running right now. Um, but normally I have about three to four running. Um, one of them is getting ready to come back. We put it on hiatus for the summer. Um, you know, we just were like, hey, people are busy and we're busy. And it was, we were shifting our um, own live show strategy at StreamYard. You know, and here's the thing is, it doesn't hurt to, even as a live stream company, we said, okay, we have to step back and go, what is working? What isn't working? What shows do we need to keep? What shows do we need to shift and change a little? Um, and so that's what we've been doing. And so we've got one of them, um, live stream impact, which is the one you were a guest on, Deborah. We'll be coming back at, um, in October. Well, I need to do a giveaway on it. So there you uh, go. I'm we will that so out there. have you on Impact, yeah. Dave. Yes. We're going to throw, uh, give some love out to the people. So We will do that. That'll be fun. <laughs> um, and we're getting ready to, one of the things I love about video is there's so much you can do with it um, and so many things that can happen with it. And at StreamYard, what I love that I've been given as an employee of the company is the tools and resources to be able to give more to people. So one of the things we're getting ready to launch in October is a five day camera confidence course. Mm. Um, So it'll be five days where you're going to get lessons. You're going to get homework to really help those who are nervous or shy about getting on video or, you know, just going, I I don't know what I'm going to talk about. I, 
I don't, you know, you get the ones who get on camera and they're going, so I'm going to wait for some <laughs> other people to get on before I start. And so we're going to help them overcome yeah. all of those little things. And so they can get on and start talking and popping and um, really feel confident on camera. I, I love that. And the evolution of the shows, it, this, you were actually one of my last one-on-one -on -one shows because this started out as an interview show and, and Dave was on early um, with Vivica once before, mm -hmm. but this is how a show evolves. At the end of last year, I thought it would be fun to bring a bunch of friends together for a New Year's party. And it was so much fun. I started doing them once a month and then I said, you know what? Let me just do these all the time because part of the joy of what I get to do is I get to introduce people to each other or reintroduce them Mm -hmm. And we all get to share information that goes out to multiple audiences. So, it, and it goes back to when I talk about Goldtopia, your mission, what is it that you want from your life? The mission behind anything, you know, to whether it's to educate, inform, entertain, whatever, you need to get out there, be visible mm -hmm. in order to be that helpful person. And if you keep things fluid, that's why I say you have the, the vision for your life but the way you go about it is what can change and it can change. It's just being aware of, of your mission and letting that steer the ship. So imagine it, um, with this, sorry to interrupt you. I'm getting excited. I, know, I was just going to let you talk. So go right ahead. <laughs> no, imagine now I, I'm old. So you guys don't know all this, but back in the day, if I wanted to do a show, I had to have a truck full of cables and big consoles and big cameras and et cetera. And now, um, you know, you can just pull up your laptop and be on StreamYard in a second, invite a guest from Timbuktu, and you are inter interacting with the public out there and building an audience. If you provide good content, uh, people are going to come back and buy your product or go to your store. Uh, you know, I talked to so many uh, local businesses uh, around the area, and last year I did a lot because I would still, I wanted my food from my favorite restaurants. I was still going to them, and they were, like, so thrilled and I'm like, you know, you need to be putting little videos up on the neighborhood app or whatever. And, and so people know and visualize what you're still mm -hmm. selling and how it's safe. And I worked with a dentist um, uh, in, in Ohio who really wanted to tell all their people how they were keeping the place clean and, and their, all their safety protocols. And, and so we got them up and running and, and they were, you know, they were just streaming out to Facebook. And I'm not sure they use StreamYard. They might have just used the Facebook app. Dummy yeah. people. I'm sorry. <laughs> I really told them, but uh, but anyway. So that but they were able to contact with their with their people on Facebook, build an audience, build trust, and then they just exploded with people coming back. You know, so it's like the bar has been lowered to nothing, where we can just get on here and right. you know, good or bad, <laughs> we are live to the world, and it's up to us to build the content. You know. It, it, and that's so true because we have anything and everything at our disposal. Mm -hmm. We can. Does it mean you always should? 100%. Maybe, maybe not. Right. Have have somewhat of a plan. Have somewhat mm -hmm. of a structure. Don't go into it and hit the live button and go. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm live. Um, <laughs> you know, you've got to have you've got to have a plan and in a but you also don't have to have it scripted. And where I tell people is find that balance between having your plan, but don't overthink it mm -hmm. because perfection doesn't exist. Mm. <laughs> so here's the thing, perfection does not exist. Nobody's ever going to be perfect. So get out there and do it and get creating the content, get talking to the people, building the audience. You may go live the first time, the first, second time, you may go live the first 20 times and have nobody show up while you're live. But if you're consistent and keep coming and keep showing up and keep promoting it and getting the mm -hmm. word out that you're doing this, you're going to start to build that audience and build that following and build the people who are showing up, just like Stacia said right there. Right. And, and, and you never Stacia, know uh, who's going to watch a replay. That's the exactly, biggest thing. Exactly, because you're going to get stream. way more. I do a live yeah. stream on Facebook where I maybe have a hundred and some people, but then I look later and there's 500 and some, you know, it's just like people want to watch it on their own time. That is the generation that's coming up. My son who's 13 watches what he wants. You think he waits Wednesday night to watch a certain TV show? No, he's going to watch it on demand when he wants to watch it and all of them in a row if he wants to. 
So, um, you know, it's just not, it's just getting out there and putting it out there, give good quality content. And Julie, you were talking about scripting a hundred percent. Um, you know, I work anytime I do a live, a training, whatever, I've got bullet points listed on a mm -hmm. piece of paper, or I'm going off a little deck or something. Yeah. I'm going to have something that triggers things that I know I need to talk about. I'm way too old to remember a script and know everything. <laughs> and I just need little points that tell me, okay, that's where we're headed and flow, you know, and that's, that, that's easy to do. So, yeah. And I, I have to add, so Stacia was one of my guests a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about visibility. Um, she's agreeing, not too much scripting. People want a conversation, not a monologue, but mm -hmm. even more important, it's so easy. We have no excuse for not using video. And it's mm. true. And But we use it everywhere, not just for the live shows. And one of the things you're talking about is scripting. So I have my questions from Goal Chat the night before and a couple links prepared. But that that's this is how I roll. And mm. <laughs> even when I do my webinars for Goal Setting Simplified, I'll usually like switch up a couple of my slides just for me, because it's mm -hmm. more fun for me if I change things up a little bit. So I think it's really important to know your style um, in whether it's for a live show or even yeah. if you're doing um, spur of the moment mm -hmm. sorts of things or right. DIYs. Uh, CF, you keep trying to say something. Uh, no, uh, for my problem, concur. My first, my first Facebook Live, I wasn't quite sure how it worked. And one of my favorite places seemed like when I did Facebook Lives, when I do them, I'm always shopping for fruits and vegetables. I don't know why. It's one of my places to get there and I get people to come in. I'm having my little rant for a moment. But it seemed like my very first one, I was at the farmer's market picking out tomatoes and just figuring out there was no one there, isn't anyone's there. And it was just pretty much, I tell people, start a place of just comfort. It doesn't have to be business related. If you're good at gardening, if you're good at with kids, whatever it may be, just start there and get acclimated with the actual platform and then move yourself up little by little. But a lot of my lives are just pretty much I'm out and about and I love about health and wellness. So I'm teaching something about fruits and vegetables. I love that. I don't know why it ended up being that way. And then it falls into business. It may turn into something about marketing or something like that. But it starts out me in somewhere in the produce picking some type of fruit or vegetable. Mm -hmm. Now it makes sense as to why I like you so much because food always ends up somewhere <laughs> in my Gold Chat Live. So thank you for for bringing on the the food today. I, I also want to thank Chad who made this beautiful comment. I keep coming back to Deborah's streams because the content is always insightful and engaging, and Thank you so much. I just know a lot of cool people and I'm blessed that they like to come hang out with you all too. So there we go. Um, so Julie, do you have, uh, I love um, CF start from your comfort level. Mm -hmm. Do you have a really quick tip uh, to add to that train? Yeah. So once you kind of figure out what your comfort level is, what you can do really. So if you're a business or somebody who's kind of getting those things, take a list of all the questions that you get asked in your business from your customers. And you can literally create a whole series of shows that are based around one question per show. So that doesn't mean, you know, you don't have to get on and stream for an hour. Your show may be a 25 minute show answering that question, or you can do 25 minutes of answering that question and then have interaction with your audience. If you've got audience members who are interacting with you and making sure you're keeping that conversation as a two way conversation and you're not just a talking head. Um, and that's where really where, you know, where Deb's bringing the comments up on the screen and talking back with the audience, it makes such a big difference. But if you take each of those little frequently asked questions that you get and just build upon those and answer those live, one, you're bringing value to your audience because these are questions you're already getting asked. So if one person has asked it, chances are there's multiple who have that question and you can build a whole FAQ, ask me anything kind of show 
um, around that, that's going to bring insight to your audience and they're going to feel like that you're valuing what they're asking because you're answering them. Exactly. You, and it's like anything in social media, you want to listen, but also respond. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, Dave, you do a series of videos on LinkedIn as well, right? Mm -hmm. it, is that your favorite way to use video or do you play favorite somehow differently? I, I've tried. So just funny, I got first hooked on video a billion years ago on live video, I should say. Uh, we were on a family vacation in Hawaii and uh, got really hot. And my son and my wife were like, we were at Pearl Harbor and I was thrilled to be there. I like to go see all that stuff. And they were way too hot. And my son wanted to go back to the swimming pool. We were at the Disney resort. So he was very excited. So they left me there. So I said, okay. So I walked around, I went over to the USS Missouri a battleship, which is where the Japanese signed the surrender. Very, very historical place. And I started to use, uh, I'm not sure if it was Meerkat or it was Periscope in the early days, but one of the two. And I was just like, here I am on the deck of Missouri, blah, blah, blah. And I started getting 10 people, 30 people. And, and you know, it, at the end of the day, it was 400 and some people on there asking me, mm -hmm. can you go back to that area and show that again? Can we walk through the cabin? I was just like, oh my God, I don't know any of these people. They found me because I had a title that said X, Y, Z. And they're on this journey with me, <laughs> you know? And so I just tried everything under the book after that to just see how engagement worked and whatnot. And it really came back to um, two things. One is that I, I, if I did a training where I really walked through, these are what we're doing in this, in this show today. And I would spill out in the beginning, this is how it's gonna work. And at the end, we're gonna do a giveaway. So you need to stay till the end. And I would do these, this walkthrough of how to use an app or how to use an audio product, et cetera. Um, and then the other thing would be uh, where I would come on and just do a fun thing like uh, a, you know, a, a bingo game or, and this was happening a lot during the, the uh, COVID because hmm. I, would be, I was bored myself, stuck within, you know, I love my wife and my son, but I got bored after a while. <laughs> so, um, I would come on and do these trivia games uh, where I would do giveaways. And if you answered all these things correctly, uh, and I would just try and engage with people about how are they, because it, it, to me, this was a very historical time that people could have been recording for future generations to see how it affected all of us. And so I was trying to promote that out there get your phone out, tell a little story about this. And I would, I would try to engage all these people. And then at the end, I would have this, let's, we're going to jump on this platform. I think it's CrowdPur. If you guys know CrowdPur. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's CrowdPur.net or .com. And it's a way, they have games. So they have trivia games. They have things that you would do at a bar. <laughs> you know, it's really fun, though. And you can pick all these trivia games. And so people wanted to stay for the trivia game. <laughs> of course, I was giving stuff away. But... And I had a blast because I was laughing at things and people's and mistakes and my mistakes. And so it's just, there's so many creative ways that you can be engaging uh, to keep people interested in watching the show. And uh, it's just at your own fingertips and we all have creativity in us. Um, it's mm -hmm. just getting them to come out and, you know, uh, Julie, you were talking about some stuff that you're gonna be doing, the training. Mm -hmm. That's the number one thing I get from people. I don't wanna be in front of the camera. You know what? Try it. It's no one's going to judge you. I guarantee you, right. because they feel the same way. Exactly. Um, get on there and start talking and tell and doing what you want and give good content. And no one's going to judge you. They're going to come back. They're going to tell your friends and their mm -hmm. friends. And and anyway, it's it's just such a wonderful time to be. And we're just in the beginning of it all. So I'm excited. And so I pulled your tip as be engaging and have fun because that's pretty much. Well, mm -hmm. it's pretty much whatever, what we're all saying mm -hmm. is if you're having fun, mm -hmm. it's going to show just as much as if you are not having fun, that's really oh. going to show. Oh, yes. <laughs> so much so. Mm -hmm. So so what advice do you have for those? I don't want to call them scaredy cat because that sounds mean. Um, yeah. Those who are not video acclimated, which... <laughs> It's kind of funny, isn't everybody? Let, let's talk in terms of broadcasting. I think anybody who's watching this is probably been on at least a dozen Zoom calls in the last, oh, 
day, week, month, whatever. So we're all used to this having this conversation when people aren't watching you. So what recommendations do you have for people having conversations when people are watching you? Uh, Julie? Yeah. So, you know, one of my favorite suggestions for people who are very nervous and scared about this is start a small Facebook group, mm -hmm. invite your trusted friends and family mm -hmm. and start going live in there. You're going to start getting comfortable interacting with people that trust you, that like you. They're not going to be the random Internet troll that hopped on your live and is rude and says things that make you uncomfortable. They're going to be encouraging and help you get more comfortable. They can also be the people that you can go back at the end and go, OK, guys, what things did you notice? What worked? What did it? You know, did I say um every other word? And do I need to start hearing that? I find myself and it's one I've gotten much better at. But for the longest time, so was my filler word. Mm -hmm. And I had to start going back and listening to my lives to hear myself catching it. And now when I do say it all, I'm like, mm, there it went. I just said it. <laughs> but I get much better at mm -hmm. not using it all the time. <laughs> um, and so this is where you'll start to get that comfort feeling with people that you know and trust mm -hmm. to then take it to the next step out to the strangers. Start safe. Mm -hmm. And then by dipping your toe in the water and then go splash, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. Excellent. CF, do you have a tip for someone who's a little bit mm, nervous? Yeah, I'm going to flip it a little bit and say start behind the camera. At least start creating videos and you can start knowing how to work the camera, how to put the storyline together, how to develop some type of messaging. And that way, I remember I'm a person who would like to be behind the camera oftentimes. And I, was, I tell people all the time, you don't always have to be in front of the camera to generate a new lead or a new customer. It's about, for example, someone had mentioned that she didn't like being in front of the camera, but she had a store. So she can still mm -hmm. invite people to her store by getting her staff to share some good stuff and talk about the different products in the store, getting some customers to share. And at some point, you're going to want to be in front of the camera or people are going to encourage you, like Julie was saying, that at this point, they're going to encourage you to come in front of the camera because everybody else now has been in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. Now it's time for you to get in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. And what I like about being in front of the camera, like Julie was saying as well, now you're able to look at yourself and some things you never knew. You may not like your voice because a lot of women, I don't like the way I look or where I sound, if you get past that, but even just critique yourself, like you're saying, oh, I said it that way, or I said it that way, but mm -hmm. now I'm able to speak more in way of knowing what I do in front of the camera, because we're not mm -hmm. aware until we get in front of the camera and kind of look at things. And I know people who do things in front of the camera, like pastors and things, they never go back and watch themselves. Like, you should go back and watch yourself. Yeah. You mm -hmm. just never know, but it, it helps you in terms of growing and being better to, in delivery. I'm not the best, I'm not trying to be perfect, but I'm trying to be better each and every time I do get in front of the camera. So I think mm -hmm. that helps in just being better within yourself and delivering just every day. But I say start behind the camera a little bit, learn how to utilize it, and then use, utilize what you have, and then come back and then try, finally get in front of the camera little by little, and you'll feel comfortable once you get in front of it. I gotta I share that. something real quick. Oh, so um, where you said that people, you know, they don't want to hear themselves. They don't like the way yeah. their voice sounds. There is actually a term for that, and it's called voice confrontation. Mm -hmm. And it is something that it's the way our way we process our own mm -hmm. voice that we don't hear it the same way strangers do. Mm -hmm. And so, very very few people like the way they sound. Now, over the years, I've gotten used to hearing it from hearing myself back that now I don't hear it the same way. But, oh, I would cringe. I hated the sound of my own voice. And then when I learned there was actually a real term for that and it was a real thing, mm -hmm. I got a little bit more at ease with going, OK, this is normal. I'm not the only one that doesn't like the way I sound. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I love the way I sound. So there you go. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I, I think I was interviewed last week. And after the interview, they said, we're going to send you the audio and you could tell us if you want me to take anything out of it. And I said, no. Yeah. What is, is it's the same. And I used to write, you know, actual physical magazine articles because I was freelancer for many years. I still do it. 
online makes me feel better because you can edit. But I remember because one time an editor changed my first line mm -hmm. and she called, and she, no, it was a he, uh, the first line talking about the movie that the interview was through. And just by changing a couple words, he called a romantic comedy, uh, he called something a romantic comedy, which was a drama, like <laughs> an intense drama. Oh, no. Ever since then, I just do not read things in print for fear of really, because you can't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. um, I like to think my attitude with interviews now is, you know, I said what I said. <laughs> We're good. Yep. But also, uh, how many lives have I done? I've done at least, um, I could probably count probably 70 lives if I started in April doing this every week. So you hope you get better, mm -hmm. um, you evolve, which is what we were talking about before, and your pattern changes. And the watching, I, I love what everybody is saying, but the whole watching to improve is great. Mm -hmm. Just don't drive yourself crazy because oh, you yeah. will get better. Yes. Mm -hmm. Trial and error, just keep it going. I'll tell you a quick yeah. story, a success story. My When the pandemic hit, my very dear cousin, uh, Dolores, um was uh head of events at the greek theater here in, in los angeles and of course that all shut down so she mm -hmm. was laid off and she really didn't know what she was going to do and something that, that's about her is she's always been a crafter and she loves uh hawaii she's she's uh hispanic but she thinks she's hawaiian and so she uh uh, started to make these little wooden earrings and other little jewelry things and hand painted them and they were beautiful and she would give them to cousins or whatever. Um, and I said, this is an Etsy store waiting to happen. Mm -hmm. And so she uh, was terrified, uh, but I said, let's do this. Let's pick a logo for you and a name. And she called it Busy D Jewelry and it was a Hawaiian vibe, an island kind of thing. And she started to do all these little uh, things. And then she was she started to live stream and using StreamYard. I think she was using my account, I'm not even sure. But um, she would use StreamYard because she it was simple for her. All she had was her computer. She didn't have a bunch of cameras. I gave her a, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, a uh, webcam. Sorry, my brain's gone. I'm old. Um, and so she would use the webcam, and she would have, give her some lighting, and she would have this backdrop with nice drapes and Hawaiian stuff, and she would show people the different pieces. And all of a sudden, this little business grew. It started out with just cousins watching it and other relatives and all of us buying things because we wanted to help her out to now she sells all over the place and she's made a little business to help uh, bring in extra funds during the whole pandemic. So, uh, you know, she was terrified of all this at first. It's turned into she's the life of the party now. <laughs> she loves to do these things. Bought a big wheel that she spins to do drawings and stuff. And so she's having the time of her life um, doing this Wednesdays and Saturdays. I think she does it um, right on Facebook and simple to do with uh, a, a thing like StreamYard and a couple of equipment uh, add-ons and you're good to go. And all of a sudden, you never know where that'll take you. We're going to have to teach her about the free giveaway tool that's built into StreamYard. Oh, okay. I did not know <laughs> myself. So we will yeah. be diving into all that. Yeah. Excellent. It's got its own little wheel that does a giveaway. So Okay. I love it. We'll, fun, we'll fun, fun. Oh. <laughs> hey. Hey, well, this leads to the next question. And I want to do this more of like a rapid fire. Okay. Um, and then I want, and while we're doing this, I want you to think about it because in a minute, I'm going to ask you to gift goals to our audience. So what goals can help them either do better video or do vi video or just do video. But before we get to that, what are some of your favorite tools? We love Iographer, we love StreamYard, we love Roku, but what else is a can't live without tool? Dave? My iPhone 11 Pro Max. <laughs> it is a monster. I can do things on it that I could never do with my DSLR. It, uh, I can not only film high quality 4K videos, I can stream to the world from anywhere that I have a, a, a internet access. Um, and um, by adding some great little microphones and things like that, I can turn this into a professional filmmaking tool. Steven Soderbergh loved it to make movies with, so it's good enough for me. So 
I, I, Apple, uh, iPhone 11 or 12 Pro Max. Can't wait to see what else they come out with. Now, for someone who was not just here, or for someone who was just terrified mm -hmm. by what you just said, mm -hmm. do, do you have a, <laughs> I'm like, ah, yeah. what? Do you have another tool to share that's maybe a little <laughs> bit less scary and massive? Okay, so a smaller tool. Okay, here you go. So you're going to sit down at your desk. You're going to make a, a list of things that you have access to. With that list of things, that's how you're going to start to formulate your story. Your story is going to go all around these things that you have access to. Then you're going to grab whatever camera you have, and you're going to go and, and tell this story using these things that you have. And we did this at the high school that I taught at to get kids to learn how to tell stories. And uh, I can't tell you how many great stories. We used to have silver medalists. I never won gold because there's a big school in LA that's uh, just for media arts only. Um, and they would always win the gold. But my students would come in with silvers all the time. And they would come out and do these little stories. And, uh, and it was great. And it's a simple thing, a little exercise you can do to get uh, the juices flowing in your brain because you see, oh, I've got, I've got this. I've got access to uh, uh, my parents' house. I've got access to the mountain roads where I can film my car driving. I've got access to uh, my friends, and I got access to the local high school. So what does that all do? Well, I'll tell you what it did for me. I went and made a little movie after I left the film business uh, back in 2001, uh, 2002. It was, called, uh, it was called Death Click, and it was a little... Uh, tiny uh, ten thousand dollar movie I made on a Sony uh, uh, Panasonic, or Panasonic DVX 100. I went out there, I told the story, got a bunch of kids from LA because actors are a dime a dozen, and uh, we made this movie in ten days. It cost me ten grand, and I sold it to Blockbuster for six figures. So, go out there, learn storytelling. You never know. You have such an easy audience now to get out and tell stories to, and practice storytelling. Well, yeah. I love that. So that one tool, what? <laughs> was that even more daunting? <laughs> no, that was actually better. So, okay. I love, so tool one is iPhone 11 Pro Max. Tool mm -hmm. two is make a list of all your tools and use it to create something, which can also be your bonus goal. So Not just we're tools, good. But everything you have access to. Yes. What do you have access to? Grandma's cabin in the mountains, uh, the beach house, my old junky car, whatever. Your video game library. There's stories in all of these. Mm -hmm. I, I love how you used junky car and beach house in the same sentence. <laughs> well, the like beach house is so expensive, you have to have a junky car. So there yes. you go. <laughs> so CF, what tool do you love that you think everybody should utilize for their videos? Um, to piggyback, first and foremost, you should use your smartphone because whatever you have, utilize it and optimize it. No matter what you have, just learn. We know how to use the Twitter. We know how to use Facebook. No matter what you have, just learn how to utilize that better because no matter what kind of phone you have, you have a quality phone or, or a lower end phone. If you can't use it, it doesn't really matter, period. Mm -hmm. But one thing I'd like to say is a selfie stick. I like to use selfie sticks because sometimes I like to be out and about walking. If I'm walking, that's a great way to, for me, I'm a nosy butt. So I like to see videos on the go. Instead of just having inside the home or in the office, if you motion in motion, I like to look at you and see what you're doing. So a selfie stick would be a great way to, again, take the, the pressure off of you, but you're out there videoing, getting some content in. And if you're doing some fitness, you can talk about that. And people like mm -hmm. to see you in motion. So I'd say a selfie stick is a great tool to add to your um, your must-have to get you out of the house. Because you don't always have to be in a house or in an office space. And sometimes mm -hmm. you're a team of one. So that team of one can be a little bit bigger. You can sway. I got kind of fancy with mine. I sway it to the side and I sway it to the back and I sway it up. You know, I get kind of look mm -hmm. fancy with it. We can see like I'm doing some great stuff. But I'm not. I'm just having fun with it. So a selfie stick. I love that. And Julie, what is your go-to tool? Yeah, well, I mean, obviously StreamYard, but mm -hmm. besides StreamYard, my second one is Agora Pulse. Mm -hmm. And the reason it's Agora Pulse is because we said earlier, a majority of your um, viewers are gonna be replay viewers. Mm -hmm. So when they're coming back and commenting on your videos, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're coming back and responding to those comments and interacting back with the people who are watching your replay. Mm -hmm. and 
when you are going out to multiple platforms all over the place, it's hard to manage that. Facebook makes it impossible to sit mm -hmm. there and get through the comments mm -hmm. in an easy format. So Agora Pulse brings all the comments into that tool and you can make sure that you are reading every single comment that is coming in on your content mm -hmm. and either responding to it, liking it, or just seeing that you saw it and just reviewing it so you've moved past it. And it really makes sure that you're continuing that engagement factor and continuing that conversation and not letting it just die at the end of your video. When you've gone live and you've hit end, that, that conversation isn't done yet. Um, mm -hmm. And what I love is, you know, this past year, Agora Pulse came out with a free version. So mm -hmm. that makes it accessible to everyone. Um, so that is my absolute go-to tool. I am in there hours upon hours every day because of the amount of lives we have on StreamYard. So I love I, it. I'm hundred percent with her on, on Agora Pulse. I'm a user. Um, I can't tell you how many times uh, it's, I don't want to say save my butt, but if someone had commented uh, on, a, on a, an ad I did on Facebook, and I never in a million years would have found it on Facebook, but through Agora Pulse, I get uh, right away. I get an email. It tells me I can respond immediately. You know, maybe it was some kind of criticism that I can hope to turn around. Right. Whatever. Um, that kind of a tool, being a solopreneur, is vital. Let me tell you. So the the secret is not just to do the videos, to engage and keep mm -hmm. going with it, mm -hmm. continue that conversation. Yeah. And Mike Alton from Agora Pulse has been on the show as well. So I will certainly tag him in the replay. <laughs> Shout out. Shout out. To Pulse. Pulse. Yes. Oh, yeah. I could not live without that tool. <laughs> uh, my life would be so much more stressful. Mm -hmm. So much more stressful, but you're always on video. You're always having fun. <laughs> Is that <laughs> not the key? You, you know, but no one would ever come. You wouldn't be able to respond to any comments ever. Exactly. <laughs> and that's it. You know, I could go out and be on video, yeah. but then, then it's a one way conversation. And mm -hmm. we said, this is a two way conversation. Even when you're not live, the conversation's still going. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So before we wrap, and this has been amazing. Didn't I say it was going to be amazing? I love it when I'm right. <laughs> what goal and Dave, you can give another goal if you want. Okay. What goal do you want to give uh, to the audience? Uh, just one thing that they can do today, tomorrow, really easy to either start streaming or up level their video, whatevering. Uh, CF, do you want to start us out? Yeah, one of my things I like to tell people that make them stand out is to start, instead of texting your comments on platform, especially for Facebook, start giving video comments. That way you're able to just tap on the button and give a comment and you're able to engage them and give them more of a personality. A lot of people don't do that. You would definitely stand out because you're doing something different that no one's doing. So give a video comment and start that way. Start doing some videos and exude your expertise and your, uh, your knowledge. So is this a comment on your own videos or other people's videos or both? Um, it's, it's in comments period. So if someone asks a question about something about how do you do videos, I should respond back in a video message. And someone asking about about goals in in your in your group, you should comment back with a video instead of writing a text. Comment with the video instead of utilizing the text messaging. People, mm -hmm. we get caught with texting so much, but the videos will help you so much more, and you'll stand out, mm -hmm. and they remember you. Okay, challenge accepted. Dave, <laughs> goal. <laughs> I, uh, I'm going to talk to the small business owners out there. I challenge you to, if you haven't done this yet, get yourself a Facebook page. Um, it's, uh, it's free. <laughs> um, get yourself on, on StreamYard um, and uh, start building an audience, uh, giving back some kind of quality content. And, and it is, by that, I don't mean really high-end video with super lighting. I'm talking about what you're telling me. Um, there's a great guy on LinkedIn, um, and I'm going to forget his name right now, but he's a, he's a plumber. I, I'm pretty sure you guys know he's a plumber. What's his name? But um, he's, I met him at, uh, at Social Media Marketing World a couple years ago, and, um, and he does these great – he's a big-time plumber in Texas, but now he's a celebrity plumber. Roger Wakefield. <laughs> That's it, exactly. And he comes on and tells people how to do simple fixes. I learned how to turn off my hot water on my, my – one of the bathrooms because of what he did. And um, he's built up this big audience with that. 
um, which has driven more business to him personally, not only speaking engagements and whatnot. So we're all good at something and you maybe you built a business around it. Get out there and start promoting yourself and be proud about it so that uh, you can build uh, and, you know, an audience and become rich <laughs> or at least very popular. I love it. And it really just proves that you can be, it doesn't matter what your expertise is, own it. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. So Julie, before you give your goal, can you really quickly explain the giveaway tool? Yeah, so within StreamYard, you could go to StreamYard.com forward slash giveaway, mm -hmm. and it will pull up a separate tab um, that will have our giveaway tool in it. And you can set a hashtag or a phrase, or you can set it to anyone who comments on your live while you're live, that it will pull in all of those um, people into that giveaway tool. And then you just use the share screen feature within StreamYard, just share that tab and you pull it up once you've got all your people entered and you can hit draw and it will do the spinning wheel um, and it flashes all of their names and it'll actually flash their pictures. You'll see them going all across and it'll pop up the winner, winner and throw confetti out. It's, uh, wow. it's a lot of fun and it brands it to whatever your branding color that you chose within StreamYard. So in Deb's instance here, it would be blue confetti. Um, so it matches the branding and it's just a lot of fun because you could have this set up, you know, right before you go live. So that way any comment can go into it or you can say, okay, we're going to do the hashtag love stream yard and anyone who says that or hashtag Deb method and you know, anything like that. And so they can pull that in and then you can give away whatever it is you want to give away, whether it's an item, whether it's a course, whether it's a consulting, um, hour, whatever it is that you've got um, that you're offering. I am going to do that this week. I am thrilled. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. so excited. <laughs> it, it is so much fun. I love using the giveaway tool. So if I well, tell someone, um, ha uh, I'm about to do the giveaway, do hashtag I love biographer, you'll mm -hmm. be entered right away. It just does it automatically. Yeah, it enters them in. So you just have to have it set up before you go live. Um, so that way it's in that separate tab mm -hmm. and it'll start to grab all those. And then give it, you know, five minutes or so or a couple minutes at least. So because, you know, we've all got the delay between. And this doesn't matter if I'm going to um, LinkedIn or, or any other it platform. Matter. Okay. It okay. pulls them all oh, in. Yes. Okay. <laughs> challenge accepted. Like yes. I love that. I'm okay, ready. so that's your challenge, Dave, is to go do a giveaway and let it. me know what you think of it. I love that. That's great. And so yeah. we can make that a bonus goal because I remember when I was on your show, it was very technological. Deb, pull a name. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, so the giveaway tool was still in development at that time. We it was available for um, Dan, our one of our CEOs. And we had been begging him. We're like, we, you know, we all need this. And so mm -hmm. they worked tirelessly behind the scenes to code it out so it was available to the masses. And then we mm -hmm. released it for free to all StreamYard users. Wonderful. I like Fun. it. And I'm going to ask you one other question. Where all these great toys, is there a good link to find where to get all the great uh, all these releases or just be part of the Facebook group or what? So the Facebook group is where we make the most announcements. Um, so I always announce any new features that are in there. We also have um, Tristan is a member of our community that watches our town hall show every Sunday without, um, you know, missing any. And um, our town hall is where Gage and Dan give a lot of our behind the scenes updates and they have those conversations. And then Tristan will take a synopsis of that and make a post in our community. Every Sunday night, that post goes up with any of the new updates um, or things like that. We are working on some new things that will be in the works to, you know, have a better delivery method. But right now the Facebook group is um, the best place for that. Awesome. Excellent. And before we wrap, where else can people learn? Because we just, oh, you never gave your goal. Like that. <laughs> That's yeah, okay. Really? Okay. So I'm going to piggyback off of Dave's a little bit. My goal is one, go sign up for StreamYard. We have a free account that is a forever free account that that free version will never charge you unless you want to upgrade to the basic or the pro. So start there, go get your free account. 
And then I want you to join the streamer group, not because I need more people in the group, but because that's where you're going to get interaction with other people who are streaming, other people who are asking questions and are getting started mm -hmm. and getting comfortable. And then I want you to go somewhere. It doesn't have to be a live out to the masses. It doesn't have to be anywhere big, but I want you to create a video, even if it's an Instagram story, if it's a Facebook story, I want you to get behind that camera and create that video and start to feel comfortable with making video mm -hmm. because then you'll be ready to jump into that challenge group that is going to be free and offer free giveaways and have lots of content to help you really get cam camera confident. Camera confident. Awesome. Hashtag oh, yeah. camera confident. I like yeah. it. I, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I guess I am now. That's great. Well, I, I feel like we're all like, we're, we're all fangirl and fan guying stream yard here. Um, I feel like we should fangirl and fan guy iographer and fangirl and fan guy. I define TV and Roku. It, it's really, it's all about community. Mm -hmm. That's what video is about. And that's why I do this show so we can create resources, share resources, but it's mostly about community and the message. I think the overall one, which I end the shows with, I'm not end you get, don't, don't go away, but is to remember that you can do it. Everything mm -hmm. that you want to create, whether it's video or behind the camera video, um, the life you want, mm -hmm. it is within your power. You just have to take a step back figure out your goals and figure out how video or whatever social media you want to create fits into that. And if you need a little extra help with your goals, you can grab a copy of your goal guide, a roadmap mm -hmm. for setting, planning and achieving your goals. It's available on Amazon or at your favorite place to buy books and also follow me at the dev method everywhere. And I also have a Facebook group for people reading the book, but also my write on online community is all about goal setting, accountability and community. So if you're not in that group, bonus extra goal is to join that as well. Um, CF, where can people find you? Um, they can find more information. They can find us at idefinetv.com. Pretty simple. And feel free to jump over there. There's a free download of a uh, um, ultimate media planner so you can start learning how to do some of the things we speak about tonight and start stretching your time online and getting more organized so feel free to reach out any questions i'm here for you online as well cf jackson across social media wonderful and i will put your links in the recap and you can go to the devmethod.com slash blog for the recap and links and the replay to this and all of my Gold Chat Live videos. So thank you. We will definitely share those links. Dave, where can people find you? Uh, nowhere. I like to hide from everybody. I, I, where can people um, find Iographer? Oh, Iographer <laughs> is at Iographer.com on every or Iographer on every social media platform. I am the one that answers everything. Feel free to ask any questions you want. Um, I love uh, answering questions. You might even get a video from me. Mm. Mm. I love those bonus Be goals. Because I don't like to type, basically. <laughs> I like See? to talk to the camera. <laughs> then you picked the right career. Yes. You? Sometimes you hit it on the, on the head. And Julie, where else can people find you? I am at Social Jewels ICT everywhere. Uh, if there's a social media platform, that handle is there. Uh, and then StreamYard is either at StreamYard or at StreamYard app on depending on which platforms. A few of them, somebody had already gotten that one before we could. And so we're at StreamYard app or at StreamYard. Wonderful. Well, thank you all so much for sharing your thoughts and advice and inspiration on video. Um, final thought, Dave. You know what? Um, Rome wasn't built in a day, so learn this stuff at your own pace, but really take a step every day and, and just learn how to do this. And I promise you that it's going to pay off for you. Mm -hmm. Learn at your own pace and take a step every day. Awesome. What about you, CF? Final tip? 
Um, I would say pretty much have fun. Find the fun in it. Once you have fun doing it, therefore it, it becomes less stressful and just come at it as a, as a youth, as a kid. Kids always have fun. They don't mind messing up and you just laugh at yourself and keep going from there. Have fun. Mm -hmm. Oh, my favorite word. Well, food fun. Yeah, <laughs> both. And Julie, what is your final tip? <laughs> Do not compare your day one to somebody else's day thousand. Mm -hmm. You've got to start and you've got to keep taking the steps forward. You're going to get better. You're going to improve. I look back on my day one and guys, it's awful and terrible and like just wishing that wasn't even existing, but it's out there. Um, Can you share that link with us? Yeah, no, oh, no, okay. we're going to hopefully that varies and dies. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but everybody started somewhere. Mm -hmm. Everybody had to pick it up at some point. Mm -hmm. And the thing was, was when, you know, we were starting Dave, you, ICF, Deb, all of us, it was there was there was nobody else to learn from. Oh. We were picking it up and trying to figure yeah. it out as we were going. People starting now. Man, you guys have all of the resources in the world. So your day mm -hmm. one's going to be a million times better than ours anyways. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And don't well, overthink it. And plus they have, HD, they have HD now. We, they have HD now. We had standard. We didn't have any HD back in the day. <laughs> I was pixelated all day. <laughs> oh, man. Well, uh, thank you again so much, CF, Dave, Julie, for sharing your time and your tips and your enthusiasm for video. And if you're watching, listening, wherever you're catching this, thank you for tuning in. And just remember, have fun, do it, go for it, and go for it. Okay, I said it twice because it was so important. Thank you for watching. We will see you next week and every Monday at 4 p.m. for a Goal Chat Live. And in the meantime, figure out your goals and go for it. <laughs>